Class 5, The Baby Arrives. You've learned how breastfeeding works. Now we'll explore how to get breastfeeding off to a good start after the baby arrives. Congratulations, your baby is finally here. It's been nine months of anticipation and a labor of love and very hard work for both you and your baby. No words can describe the intense rush of feelings of love, relief, excitement, and exhaustion. In an instant, your life has changed. You're a mother, maybe for the first time. Or if you have other children, you're a new mother all over again. The first hour after birth is a special time of transition and recovery for both of you. It's also referred to as the fourth stage of labor. You and your baby need contact with each other immediately after birth. Your baby will be in a state of quiet alertness. She is awake, her eyes are open, and she is looking to gaze into your eyes. The hormone oxytocin is flowing through your body. It causes the uterus to contract, your breasts to release milk, and this love hormone, as it's sometimes called, causes mother and baby to fall in love. If everything has gone well with the birth, the nurses will dry her off and place her skin to skin on your chest, between your breasts. Your body will keep her warm as she learns to adjust to life outside of you. The nurses may put a hat on her head and a warm blanket over the two of you. Speak to your baby. She is very familiar with your voice and slowly guide her to your breast so she can familiarize herself with your breast and nipple. This first hour after birth is a precious time that should not be rushed. This is not the time to worry about getting everything right. Your baby has never had to work for her food before, so both you and she are using this time to get to know each other. This is also a time of family adjustment. Visitors should wait until after the first breastfeeding occurs before entering the room. Brand new babies may only lick the nipple and take a few sucks. This is perfectly normal. Remember, this is a time to relax and enjoy each other, not a time for instruction on the finer details of correct positioning. Placing your baby skin to skin on your chest after birth is important to help her adjust to life outside the uterus. Your skin is soft and warm and helps baby's temperature adjust gradually. Babies who are skin to skin cry less, and their breathing rates, heart rates, and blood sugars stabilize more quickly than if they were cared for under a warmer. Breastfeeding occurs when the baby is ready and your breasts are primed to begin milk production. Many research studies have shown that babies who are born prematurely especially benefit from skin to skin care, and mothers are encouraged to hold their babies skin to skin when in the neonatal intensive care unit. Colostrum, the early milk present in the breasts immediately after birth, is sometimes called a super milk or liquid gold. It not only provides essential nutrition, it's full of vitamins, minerals, germ-fighting cells, and antibodies. In most neonatal intensive care units, colostrum is considered a medicine or immunization and is an essential component of disease protection for preterm babies. Before birth, mother passes some of their antibodies to fight disease and specialized immunities through the placenta. The remainder of the protection must be transferred to the baby through breastfeeding. Colostrum comes in small quantities, maybe a half teaspoon to a teaspoon at first, exactly matching the size of your newborn baby's stomach. As a reminder from the last lesson, your baby's belly is only initially the size of a chickpea. Colostrum is very easy for babies to digest and has a laxative effect, helping babies poop more easily and frequently. In the United States, the incidence of birth by cesarean section is at its highest, one in three. So the chances are high that a mother may have a surgical birth. Don't worry, you can still breastfeed your baby if you have a C-section birth. Some hospitals allow skin-to-skin -skin contact in either the operating room or recovery room, depending on the condition of the mother and baby. If mother and baby have to be separated for medical reasons, sometimes the father of the baby can initiate skin-to-skin -skin care. In most cases, the medications given during a C-section are safe while breastfeeding. If you have time before surgery, talk with the surgeon and anesthesiologist and tell them you plan to breastfeed and want to hold your baby skin-to-skin -skin as soon as possible. Because your abdomen will be sore from the surgery, you may need help finding a comfortable position to breastfeed the baby. Don't be afraid to ask for help. The hospital may have nurses or a lactation consultant available to assist you in getting started. While you were pregnant, your baby's nutritional needs were met. Now she has to learn how to breastfeed and for the first time must work to get food. 
Every mother needs to learn how to feed her baby, considering his unique needs and abilities. It takes time and practice for both of you to learn the dance. When baby latches onto the breast, she needs to get a big mouthful, about one half inch to one inch of the areola behind the nipple. If baby nibbles on or slurps the nipple in her mouth, soreness will result and the nipple could crack and bleed. If breastfeeding hurts, be sure to ask for help while you're in the hospital. The lactation consultant or nurse can assist you with positioning the baby so breastfeeding will be more comfortable. Having baby latch well is the first step to successful breastfeeding. A baby that latches well, breastfeeds well, and removes milk from the breast well. To get started, support the breast with four fingers, cupping underneath the breast and the thumb on top. Tickle the baby's lips with your breast. When baby opens his mouth wide, bring him up and onto the breast so he gets a big mouthful of breast, about one half inch to one inch of the areola in his mouth. You may feel a little soreness for the first few days when the baby latches on, and a strong tug as the baby continues to nurse, but you shouldn't feel toe curling pain. If breastfeeding is painful, remember to get help. Breastfeeding is not supposed to be painful. A good latch is an essential element to comfortable and effective breastfeeding. Sometimes it takes a while for both you and your baby to get the hang of it. That's okay. Try not to worry. It just takes practice. Remember, your baby has never had to work for his food before. Signs of a good latch are, your baby has a big mouthful of breast and is not sucking on the nipple only. Baby's top and bottom lips will be flanged outward, like a fish or a rosebud. The baby's chin is touching the breast, and it's okay if the baby's nose touches the breast. And a comfortable feeding, not toe-curling pain. If baby is not positioned correctly on the breast and is sucking only the nipple, your nipples can become very sore. They can crack and bleed, and milk will not be effectively transferred from the breast to the baby. A poor latch can lead to very painful breastfeeding, a fussy baby, and a decreased milk supply. A lactation consultant or trained nurse can help you correct the latch and fix the problem before it gets too serious. When positioning yourself and your baby for breastfeeding, be sure you're comfortable wherever you're sitting or lying down. Position the baby so he is turned towards your body and his ear, shoulders, and hip are in a straight line. Babies can function better neurologically when their bodies are in a straight line and flexed inward towards their midlines. Use a pillow or two to elevate baby to the level of your breast and to provide support for baby's body and your arm. If your breast is very large, placing a rolled up towel underneath the breast will provide some added support. Here are several breastfeeding positions you can use. Cradle, cross cradle, side lying, and the football hold. When beginning to breastfeed, cup your breast with your palm and fingers underneath the breast, thumb on top and out of the way of the areola. Tickle the baby's lips. When baby opens wide, bring baby up and onto the breast. Aim your nipple towards the roof of baby's mouth. The first few days of breastfeeding are a time for you and your new baby to get to know each other, to learn how to breastfeed, to establish your family unit, and to begin a life together. On the first day of life, you and your baby are tired and recovering from birth. After a couple of hours of alertness, the baby is often very sleepy and may not seem too interested in breastfeeding. This is normal. Try keeping the baby skin to skin, and when he begins to stir and awaken, you can offer the breast, but don't worry if he just nuzzles and licks the breast. Healthy babies have energy reserves and don't necessarily need oral intake in the first 24 hours. All feeding attempts are important aspects of the milk making process. Over the next couple of days, you will notice that your baby has more frequent wakeful periods and may show you he is now becoming interested in feeding. Some feeding cues are squirming, bringing his fist to his mouth, opening and closing his mouth, sticking out his tongue. You don't need to wait until the baby cries before you feed him. Crying is a late cue that baby is hungry. Have patience during these early days of breastfeeding. Remember, it's a learned skill for both of you. Some babies take longer than others to become experts at breastfeeding. Some mothers take longer. There's a normal curve for learning to breastfeed. It just takes practice and patience to get it going smoothly. After leaving the hospital, you'll begin to notice that your breasts are feeling fuller as your milk volume increases over the next few days. Most babies nurse about 8 to 12 times in a 24-hour period. 
Some babies nurse every one and a half to two hours around the clock, while others cluster their feedings. That is, they breastfeed every hour for a while, then sleep three or four hours before the next cluster of feedings. Each baby is different. Your baby may seem more satisfied after some of his feedings, although he will have fussy periods, too, when it seems like he wants to nurse all of the time. Again, this is normal. Over the first five days of life, you'll notice that your baby's bowel movements will change from the dark greenish-black of meconium to the yellow seedy stools of a breastfed baby. Before leaving the hospital, be sure to get help if you're having trouble breastfeeding. You want to feel comfortable and confident before going home with your new baby. Ask your nurse for a list of resources that you can use if you need help with breastfeeding after you go home. In some locations, there are private lactation consultants, in-hospital lactation clinics, volunteer assistants, or peer counselors from the WIC office who are available to assist breastfeeding mothers. Make sure you have an appointment with your baby's health care provider for a weight check within a couple days after discharge. Now that we've gotten breastfeeding off to a great start in the hospital, we'll learn about the first couple of weeks at home and how to manage life with a breastfed baby.